going on guys thanks for coming back another day another flannel so today we're going to be doing the vinegar syndrome films we're going to have a lot of good ones and we're going to have a lot of duds so without further ado let's get into it okay so i've got all of my vinegar syndromes start right after the arrow videos come down all the slip cover additions and then i have the non-slip covers as well i am missing a few and so yeah let's get into this so Berserker is probably one of the most boring films I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> not a good start. Um, uh, yeah, just not. A, there's like four people that die in this. Two die right at the beginning, and then it's just them messing around the woods all day. Beyond Evil, another super boring one. Oh, man. Not even John Saxon could uh, save this movie. At least, at least the slipcover looks pretty. Beyond the Door 3, not the greatest, but special effects are fantastic. This is kind of one of those films where you don't really know what's going on, and you don't really need to. <laughs> okay, now speaking of n not knowing what's going on, Blood Pete. So, a woman kind of sermons a demon with her orgasms? And so, yeah, that's the movie. <laughs> not, not very good, honestly. Blood Games, holy hell, guys. This is one of the better Vinegar Syndrome releases. It's one of the more recent ones, too. I cannot recommend this one enough. A fantastic revenge film. Really high body count. Really awesome kills. A lot of fun all around. Blood Harvest, Tiny Tim is a clown. He's creepy as hell. I'll give him that. This film is, is a little boring. Um, yeah, not the best slasher. Not the worst, either. Blood Theater. I enjoyed this one. Now, I know a lot of people say this is probably one of their least favorite Vinegar Syndrome films, but I had a good time with it. This also has The Visitants in it. Um, not great, but not awful either. Bloody New Year. This is one of those so bad it's good films. <laughs> I mean, it starts off slow, but it like turns into a slasher with hints of Night of the Demons, almost. So, I mean, hey, if those things are up your alley, you might have a good time. Body Melt is body horror. Just a lot of gross out scenes. A lot of fun though. I enjoyed that one. The Children. This one really surprised me. Really, really surprised me. I'm going to try and show you guys the backs on some of these just because these slip covers are... Vinegar Syndrome is the best to do it out there. This one really surprised me. This is a lot of fun and these kids are creepy as hell, man. Corpse Grinders. This one surprised me too. I think this is like 1971. So this is an earlier film a lot of fun they grind up people and put it into cat food <laughs> I mean, what's not to like cutting class slasher film with brad pitt who thought um not my favorite slasher film um it's a little too hokey a little too just not i don't know they can't tell if it wants to take itself seriously or not in my opinion so still up in the air on that one the dead come home otherwise known as dead dudes in the house or the house on tombstone hill <sighs> so many names awesome trauma film probably one of the better slasher films released by trauma not bad at all deadline i'm not a fan of this film the only good scenes in this one are like dreams so they don't really like happen you know it's like kind of, kind of one of those like backhanded compliments where it's like hey it's 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 okay but it's still not <laughs> you know demonoid oh i hated this movie guys just not a fan of course, I show you the back of one of the slipcovers that has nothing on it. Just not fun. <laughs> Demon Wind. The exact opposite, man. This one is so much fun. Absolutely love this movie. It's a great kind of twist. I always say it's a D version, like a D-rated version of Night of the Demons meets Evil Dead. Man, it's just wild. Really good gore. Dolly Dearest. Another one that didn't necessarily do it for me. Just a little bit boring. Not a lot happens. The doll doesn't really have that much of an attitude or, you know, it doesn't... It's just lacking character, pretty much. Evils of the Night. I don't really know, man. I don't know what the hell was going on in this movie the entire time I watched it. Couldn't tell if I hated it or loved it. Oh, got that one in backwards. Flesh... Flesh-eating mothers. <laughs> um, this movie... Single-handedly, I feel pretty confident saying this, has some of the worst acting I've ever seen in my life. But that's not a deterrent because it's actually like so interesting. It makes it, it makes it funny. This movie, oh my God, it's, it's not bad actually. 
Grave Robbers, an awesome, it has a lot of kind of Halloween fall atmosphere. I really dug it. I liked it a lot. Up next, Grandmother's House. I don't know why it's called Grandmother's House, because I remember it like focuses more on the grandfather. Did anyone else kind of question that? I don't know. Eh, not, not my favorite. Speaking of not my favorite, Hellmaster, man. I kind of had high hopes for this one, another John Saxon film. Just, I mean, because the the guy, you know, it kind of looks creepy or whatnot, but just didn't do it for me. <laughs> Who'd have thought, you know, coming from Vinegar Syndrome, they released so much fire. Um, Ice Cream Man, a lot of fun. Clint Howard is just ridiculous. You can kind of see me in the reflection. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, decent, fun horror movie. Doesn't take itself too seriously, obviously. Incubus. Now, I don't remember much from this one. You know, with Vinegar Syndrome, you gotta, like, post up with a with a beer or two. And I probably had five or six with this one, so <laughs> I don't remember too much. Jack Frost, that slipcover. That, this is the best lenticular slipcover, I think. Has to be. Right next to The Shallows. You guys know what I'm talking about. This movie, uh, I like it more each time I watch it, surprisingly enough. It's just way, it's super hokey. And the soundtrack is like a rockabilly surf soundtrack. It's the weirdest fucking thing, because it's, it's obviously based in the winter i don't know very strange luther the geek another one that doesn't necessarily do it for me awesome slip cover though look at that so cool okay next up mausoleum a lot of fun i remember this was one of the surprise titles i think it was for black Fr uh yeah black friday very very fun movie a lot of people aren't gonna like this one i already know it it's cheap kind of feels like a trauma film at times but the gore is a lot of fun and the uh demon has boobies <laughs> Mountaintop Motel Massacre. Now, they did something very unique with this release that I don't know if a lot of people know or not. So let me just take a film I have down here. This rap, this is one rap, right? This thing has two and they're double-sided. So if you were to open this up and look at the case, you could change the cover to four different artworks. Insane, absolutely insane. Um, I like this one a lot, actually. Very entertaining. I enjoy that a lot. Now, talking about entertaining, oh my god. If you guys haven't seen Night Beast, check this out. If you if you love trauma and things of the sort, man, this creature is just messing people up left and right. It is insane. And a uh, fun fact about this one, an excerpt from this is playing in uh, the 2018 film Mandy, which I will talk about when I do my complete collection overhaul. Night Train to Terror, one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Just nothing makes sense, and when it does, it's boring as hell. Not, not fun. Pledge Night, a slasher movie that takes a while to turn itself into a slasher movie, you know, not a lot. It's just hazing for most of it, but once the slasher comes out in it, it's a very enjoyable time. Some good, good kills in there. And then we have the Slaughterhouse split slipcover that they did, and like, uh, yeah, mine's kind of like coming out of it. So you see how it fits in there. And your boy's OCD kind of is off a little bit because as you can see, it's not in one of, it doesn't fit in these cases. It's like a little bit taller than the rest. I mean, splitting hairs, you know, but collectors will know what I'm talking about. Spookies, a film that is just a downright mess. Um, just killed in post-production. And I know it had a lot of behind the scenes problems. Uh, it has This has like two full-length documentaries on it too man they decked this release out absolutely decked it out but um if they would have just went with the original director director's direction i think this could have been a very very good movie to kind of rival you know night of the demons and kind of other films where kids go into a house and just get torn apart by these creatures the suckling oh my god i don't get offended by movies but the beginning of this movie i was offended uh, if you've, I'm not going to talk about it, but if you've seen this one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Man, I couldn't believe the things I was being shown. <laughs> uh, there's nothing out there. This is a fun horror comedy. I wasn't expecting much, um, but yeah, it's it leads you to think it's a slasher, and it's kind of slasher satire, kind of pokes fun at the genre, but that's what's great about it is because you think that it's going to go in that direction, and it kind of doesn't. I don't know. Interesting movie. The Undertaker. I enjoyed this one a lot, too. Joe Spinell is just always sweaty as hell, so you know it's going to be a good time. Um, yeah, good one. Unmasked Part 25. No, I'm split on this movie. This is... 
it starts off as a slasher film and ends as a slasher film, but then it's an hour and 15 minutes of just drama in between. So, I mean, not, not my favorite. And I was kind of let down because I, you know, it's like, oh, it's a slasher movie. And of course it's a horror comedy and whatnot, but yeah, didn't necessarily live quite up to the hype I had for it personally. The Vineyard, a decent enough movie. This is another one where not really a lot happens, but it's it's good for what it is. Wacko, a horror comedy that is definitely focused more so on horror. Um, it's uh, takes place during Halloween. You have Andrew Dice Clay and whatnot. It's not awful, but not the best either. Blood Hook, obviously uh, not with a slipcover. This movie is so much longer than it needs to be. This movie's like an hour and 50 minutes long, guys. Absolutely insane. Makes no sense. But it's a it's a good slasher when it gets down to it, but there is a lot of dragging parts. Oh my God, Christmas Evil. Uh, this is m probably one of my least favorite movies. It's just, this gets so much love, and I'm not sure why. I'm really not sure why. It's boring, in my opinion. And then the exact opposite. A movie that everyone hates, but I enjoy. Death Row Game Show, just ridiculous, man. Cheesy. People in prison can or just getting killed or get released, you know, by competing in those games. Just insane. All right, next shelf. Don't answer the phone. An absolute sleazy, awesome. I, I I'm almost remiss to call this a slasher, but it's like kind of not. I don't know. Just a very. It really went beyond my expectations. I enjoyed it. Don't go in the woods alone. Um, not particularly great. Honestly, one of the cheaper feeling slashers. I really do need to revisit this one, though. It's been a couple years. Sorry for that light shining through there, guys. Frightmare, a very fun slasher movie that no one talks about. Um, it's like kids in a mo mansion getting killed off. And a young Jeffrey Combs is in this. Very kind of cool to see him in a movie like that. Graduation Day, Another super cheap feeling slasher, not amongst my favorites, but it's definitely worthy of owning. And uh, yeah, man, it's a good time. The hearse, one that really kind of fell, fell off the wagon for me. This one's just it plays it off really boringly. It really focuses on kind of atmosphere and mood and that, and that works for me in some movies, but not this one, unfortunately. And I, I know y'all are peeping my uh, Super Mario Brothers steelbook. <laughs> Speaking of uh, horror movies. Um, all right, back to Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, Hobgoblins, an awful kind of gremlins and critters rip off. This just falls short for me. I, I'm not a fan of this one personally, but I don't know. I just can't let it go. I don't, I don't know why. I, I, f I feel like that's the case with a lot of Vinegar Syndromes, man. It's like I have let some of them go because I can't stand them, but they're... <sighs> They're lovable. It's like the ugly stepchild. Uh, <laughs> Madman is up next. This one I was hoping would get a slipcover release, and we still haven't gotten one. Um, a good slasher. Definitely better than some of the previous ones I just went over. Graduation Day and uh, Don't Go in the Woods Alone. A lot of a lot of fun. Not, of course, it's not in the upper echelon. You know, it's not that good, but it's it's a good enough time. A Linny Quigley double feature of Murder Weapon and Deadly Embrace. Murder Weapon I highly recommend. It's bad, but, like, the kills are insanely great. Like, I don't know if you can see that guy, but, yeah. Um, Deadly Embrace is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Okay, not that bad, but not... Deadly Embrace is not good. I, yeah, get it for Murder Weapon. I almost wish Murder Weapon had its own movie. Nightmare Weekend, or, oh, that's next. Nightmare Sisters, uh awesome man you've got all three michelle bauer bring stevens and lenny quigley all the um 80s scream queens you need it's just a good movie nightmare weekend this one is right there with evils of the night where i just don't know what the hell's going on man just no clue <laughs> the entire time i just have no idea uh psycho copper turns this one was very surprising i enjoyed this movie fun kills decent kill count um, and it takes place in an office. So, uh, in a high-rise building. Very kind of unique. Now, I haven't seen the original, so I can't really talk about the original. But I have heard through the grapevine that this one kind of outshines it. So, Psycho Cop Returns, or Psycho Cop 2. 
uh terror this one is a very good kind of atmospheric gothic moody movie i'm really into this one missed out on the slip cover but that's okay i don't i don't need a slip cover for everyone you know it's all right and then last but not least is witch trap now lenny quigley again wow okay well she's in a lot of vinegar syndromes i've learned to uh, find out but yeah this one is it's it's decent it's it's not bad it's not great oh you know i'll upgrade it instead of decent this one's good um you have the shower scene with linnea quigley of course the throat kill awesome that it drags for a while but it definitely redeems itself all right guys that is the vinegar syndrome collection there let me just browse through one more time all right guys thanks again for showing up and watching me talk about my movies let me know which of these you love, which you hate. Check me out on Instagram at SlashingCaptain. I post slasher film reviews with kill counts and fun facts. I also have a, a podcast at It's a Horror Podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I like blanked for a second. It's a horror podcast. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed to check out my future collection update videos. And I'll check you guys out later.